My name is Kiran Vagabai Patel. I was born in Kutspa, near Novsar in Gujarat. I completed my higher and postgraduate education in the UK. I have lived, worked and travelled across 60 countries of the world and I've advised over 80 global businesses across the world. I run and own a professional advisory firm. I qualified as a private pilot. I'm an advanced paddy open water diver, a frustrated and poor golf and chess player, and I'm now learning to play the violin. supported major global companies across the world to be successful. I had the opportunity to travel widely and got to know many nations and their cultures. I've always been interested in change and improvement from a personal perspective, individual, commercial, corporate and from an industrial lens and, and now to a national perspective. I noticed the blends and commonality in the values, behaviours, ethics, ways of living ways of working and saw these as a building blocks for individual and corporate behaviors. I identified six key factors that were common across all nations. I called these foundation pillars as they were the essential components to make a nation successful and I used India as a case study. The idea then blossomed in 2011 as I was reading about the many changes that were happening across Northern Africa, citizens demanding change and improvement. And that, coupled with what was happening in India in mid to late 2011, with our citizens demanding change and improvements in India, I looked at options of how best I could contribute to this change in India. I decided by putting my views on paper and my opinions and to share that in the book. I started writing the book in 2011 and I got it first copyrighted in mid 2012. The assets of all nations are not just its minerals, its gold, its, its, its oil. Its key assets are its people and its soil and environment. People are the key, its citizens. Our assets wear shoes. We need to leverage all of our people assets and in the first instance we have to have them in shoes. We need to help them help themselves support and develop the growth of the nation. Having traveled across 60 countries, however, there is no place like home. India is a nation of my birth. It is a nation of my domicile. It is a nation that I care about. I know that we have to have an Indian solution. We are a very large and a very diverse nation. We need to live, compete, thrive, and be consistently successful in a global marketplace. We currently import more than we export. Our balance of payments, our national debt, and our currency are all subject to this, adversely subjected. The theme of the book builds on the principles of Ashoka's Pillars, the stone inscribed edicts found across South Asia. A view of the six foundation pillars that is essential and the basis for, for change in India in the 21st century. Firstly, the book is fact, data and information based. I've used multiple and the best available sources for the information to tell and share my message. Secondly, there are quotes on each page that make it relevant and also make the reading interesting. And thirdly, this is not just discussion and ideas, it is not theoretical. It is based on research, real experience, interviews and discussions with individuals across many, many countries and across India. absolutely relevant. With the many current and potential issues facing India, it is at the cusp of change. 
It'll either continue to develop and grow for the benefit of all citizens, becoming a global economic and social powerhouse, realizing the demographic dividend, or it'll have been a has-been nation, a could-have-been nation, reaping the demographic disaster. So the new leadership has to be representative of the demographics of the nation, have a clear India first and an Indian citizen-centric vision, and to deliver this with efficiency and effectiveness. There are many internal and external forces which would wish India not to succeed in this venture. Sustainable change in any nation, especially India, is going to be multi-generational. Leaders need to have a vision for their nation, standing in 2050 or 2030, and then looking back from that point in time, they should ask themselves, what changes should we have made? How should we have made those changes? And what should we have done differently and better? The first India of the traditional and new middle and upper class social groups must work together with the remaining second India to reduce the gap between the haves and the have-nots. There are two. The first is dowries and dowry deaths, and by extension, our attitude towards girls and women. That is half of our population. Females and wives are the core and the center of our families. They are our future. They are an untapped an unappreciated resource. Our laws need to significantly change to better protect women and our law enforcement and judiciary need to ensure that all of our citizens, especially women, are safe 24-7 within our streets, within our villages, within all of our towns and all of our cities across our nation. The consequences of acts against girls and women should be severely punished and the guilty taken off our streets until they have suitably reformed. The second is castes. We are a secular nation. This is our strength and a significant advantage. National progress and success depends on utilizing all of our citizens, regardless of gender, caste or whatever other criteria we use. At the end of the day, we are all Indian. Family names, surnames, they are changed and can be changed. So names change. Citizens move across states, whether it's for employment, for preference, for family. So our state of birth or our state of, of, of living changes to a new state of living. We move. Voluntarily or involuntarily, people have changed their beliefs and their religious views. It is their choice for their own development. People change professions. A farm laborer can become a factory worker, can then become a businessman, and can then become a successful grober entrepreneur. So that is regardless of caste. Finally, people move abroad. That doesn't make them any less Indian. At the end of the day, the only thing that should count is being Indian, first and foremost. Education in economics now makes castes irrelevant and a hindrance to our continued personal development of our citizens and therefore the continued development of our nation. Yes, totally doable. If other nations can do it, we can. We must. Change will take time and commitment. As a nation, one of our greatest weaknesses is not being able to deliver on time, in full, to a level of cost and quality that our citizens expect. We must begin to think differently and we must put India first. Initially, I had three readership groups in mind the over 40-year-old citizens who have seen firsthand the positive and negative changes that have happened in India over the last 30 years. There is a 25 to 40-year-old category which these citizens have begun their employment and their careers and they seek a better future for themselves. 
They seek opportunities and seek equality, a meritocracy, a nation where all and one are equal. The final group is the 13 to 25 year old citizens. Those at the start of their career, what they have expectations and energy and they want prospects. They want a brighter future. They wish opportunities and to have that in a safe and secure nation. Each group has its own expectations and are able to make a positive contribution to the change necessary for our national benefit. I would wish engagement from all citizens, elected officials and stakeholders within each of the six foundation pillars. The book represents my first view of what we need to do and how we need to do it. The media must remain independent, professional, balanced, investigative and remorseless in its quest for answers to the truth. Any less would be a disservice to the profession.